June of 2016, OnePlus showed the world its third flagship smartphone. The OnePlus 3 continued OnePlus's trend of producing ultra-premium smartphone hardware for a low price. While OnePlus has called itself a small startup, the company faces fierce competition from bigger Chinese companies such as Xiaomi, Meizu, ZTE, and Huawei. So how does OnePlus's latest flagship smartphone stack up against Huawei's revered Android reference device for 2015? How's it going everybody? This is Matt D, and this is OnePlus 3 versus Nexus 6P. It's often been suggested that the P in Nexus 6P stands for premium, given its beautiful metal hardware superior to that of its 2015 counterpart, LG's Nexus 5X. The Nexus 6P is quite a tall device as it houses a 5.7 inch AMOLED display by Samsung at a resolution of 2560 by 1440. This high resolution display packs a pixel density of 518 pixels per inch. On either side of the display, Huawei's built-in front-facing stereo speakers, which is a huge plus for media consumption whether you're watching online video or just streaming your favorite music. Above the screen and adjacent to the earpiece, Huawei's included an 8 megapixel front-facing shooter that'll record video in up to 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second. At the very top, you'll find the standard issue 3.5mm headphone jack, while on the left side of the phone there's a nano SIM tray. On the right side of the latest Nexus flagship, Huawei has placed a textured power button above the volume rocker. At the bottom, you'll find that the Nexus 6P charges via USB Type-C. Moving around to the back of the device, the first thing you'll notice is the so-called visor, which is a distinct element of the 6P's design, housing the phone's 12.3 megapixel rear camera. This primary camera on the 6P can shoot video in up to 4K resolution. While the 6P's rear camera is not optically stabilized, it does offer laser autofocus. Below the visor, Huawei's added a Nexus imprint fingerprint scanner that can be used for mobile payment solutions, unlocking your device, or accessing particular apps. Powering the Nexus 6P is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 version 2.1 system on a chip, backed up by 3GB of RAM and an Adreno 430 GPU. As for internal storage, the Nexus 6P is available in three different configurations, 32, 64, or 128GB. Lastly, the 6P packs a 3450 mAh battery that should easily get through a typical day of usage and then some. Like its predecessor, Motorola's Nexus 6, the Nexus 6P by Huawei is compatible with LTE, GSM, and CDMA networks throughout the world, so those of you who have service on CDMA-based carriers like Verizon Wireless and Sprint should have no trouble using your own Nexus 6P on those two networks. In addition to the usual array of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS connectivity, the Nexus 6P also offers near-field communication technology for mobile payments via Android Pay. Moving on to the OnePlus 3, OnePlus's mid-2016 flagship brought a huge change in OnePlus's design language. Gone is the sandstone textured backplate that became OnePlus's signature design element on its first two phones. With the OnePlus 3, the company is using a brand new design language. Similar to the phones in HTC's One product line along with Huawei's Mate series flagships, the OnePlus 3 is constructed entirely of aluminum, giving the phone a high-end, ultra-premium feel in the hand. OnePlus's third flagship smartphone has a 5.5-inch 1080p optic AMOLED display by Samsung with a pixel density of 401 ppi. Above the screen, OnePlus has included an 8-megapixel front-facing camera next to the earpiece. Below the screen, there's a fingerprint scanner slightly larger than the one found on the OnePlus 2. That ultra-fast fingerprint scanner is flanked by two customizable navigation buttons. More on that later. On the right-hand side of the phone, OnePlus has placed the phone's power button just below the phone's SIM tray, which will accommodate two nano SIMs. The top of the phone is clean with no notable features. Moving over to the left-hand side of the OnePlus 3, there's the phone's volume rocker below the OnePlus's trademark alert slider, allowing the user to toggle between receiving all notifications, notifications from priority contacts, or none at all. Finally, at the bottom of the OnePlus 3, there's a speaker and a 3.5mm headphone jack flanking the phone's USB Type-C charging port. Turning over to the rear of the OnePlus 3, the phone houses a 16-megapixel rear camera with phase detection autofocus and optical image stabilization. Below the sensor, there's a lone LED flash. The OnePlus 3 is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 system on a chip accompanied by an Adreno 530 GPU. While OnePlus's third major flagship handset comes with 64GB of non-expandable storage, the phone boasts a whopping 6GB of RAM. 
Today, 6 gigabytes of RAM is overkill for a smartphone, but such a massive amount of memory will certainly future-proof the OnePlus 3 for the next few years. Powering the OnePlus 3 is a 3000 mAh battery. As for cellular connectivity, the OnePlus 3 is capable of running on any LTE and GSM-based cellular networks throughout the world. In addition to the usual Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS connectivity found on most smartphones, OnePlus brought back NFC with the OnePlus 3 after receiving a wealth of criticism for not incorporating NFC technology into the OnePlus 2. While Android Marshmallow introduced Google Now on Tap, the Doze battery saving feature and user-defined app permissions, Android 7.0 Nougat adds a wealth of new features to Google's mobile operating system on the Nexus 6P. First, let's take a look at the redesigned notification shade. With one swipe down from the top of the screen, Google gives you access to a small set of quick toggles including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, invert colors, do not disturb, and mobile data. A second swipe down will display redesigned app notifications that will now stretch across the entire width of the screen. Plus, with Android Nougat, the user can finally reply to notifications from certain apps directly from the notification shade. Finally, with a third swipe, the standard Android quick toggles will now show up, this time with a second page to house additional toggle switches. Another major addition to Google's latest iteration of Android is a new multi-window feature similar to what can be found on Samsung and LG's latest flagship phones. While this is a great addition to larger phones like the 6P and 2014's Nexus 6, I really don't think I'll be using this on the smaller Nexus 5X. In addition to the split-screen multitasking feature, a double tap on the recent apps key will take you back to your previously opened app. With the highly anticipated release of Android 7.0, Google enhanced the Doze battery saving feature via Doze on the go, which will allow the Nexus 6P to operate in a low power mode when the phone is idle. In addition to the redesigned notification shade, the multitasking features in Doze on the go, Google has expanded upon its collection of emojis in the official keyboard. Under the surface, Android 7.0 Nougat brings support for the new Vulkan API for better in-game graphics, along with Daydream, which enhances the VR experience on the latest Android devices. Alongside the redesigned notification shade, multi-window feature, and system UI tuner menu that I mentioned in my videos on the Nexus 6P, I also want to go over some of the minor improvements to certain aspects of Android 7.0. The stock Android settings menu has been improved with the release of Android Nougat. Below a list of suggested actions, Google has added small subtitles to each function in the settings screen. Like for example, the Wi-Fi tab under Wireless and Networks will display the name of the Wi-Fi network that your device is connected to. This redesigned menu will also show you how much data you used, your screen brightness, your ringer volume, and battery percentage among other things. One of my favorite features of Android Nougat is the newly added Clear All button in the recent app screen. After opening several apps and a long list of web pages, the recent app screen gets to be extremely cluttered, making it difficult to navigate through. Anyway, I'm glad this new Clear All button was added into the operating system. Overall, I'm really enjoying many of these new aspects of Android 7.0 Nougat. There are so many more features that have been included in Google's latest OS, but I just wanted to hit the highlights in this comparison. Recently, the OnePlus 3 has been updated to the all-new Oxygen OS 4.0 alongside the newer OnePlus 3T. Since Oxygen OS 4.0 is built atop Android 7.0 Nougat, OnePlus's latest vision of Google's mobile operating system brings with it the newest staple features of stock Android. With Oxygen OS 4.0, the OnePlus 3 now offers multi-window mode in addition to other standout Android Nougat features like the new wider notification shade. While Oxygen OS has been integrated with Android 7.0, Oxygen OS now has new tricks up its sleeve. Examining the Oxygen OS home screens, OnePlus's fourth major release of Oxygen OS comes with built-in DPI scaling. The five levels of scaling allow text and icons to shrink, allowing the user to include more icons and widgets on the phone's home screen. While the DPI scaling has changed, the persistent Google search bar has disappeared. Looking at other aspects of the UI, the toggle switches in the notification shade now default to a shade of blue while you can also find the same settings menu sidebar including in stock Android 7.0. Plus, while the user can now switch between default, light, and dark menu themes, Oxygen OS now allows you to choose what icons can and cannot appear in the status bar. Circling back to the staple features of Oxygen OS, OnePlus has included its shelf panel at the OS's leftmost home screen. In addition to that, Oxygen OS was one of the first Android skins to allow the end user to modify the toggles in the Android notification shade. In addition to that, OnePlus actually beat Google to the punch in adding user-configurable app permissions into the operating system. 
Previously in the video, I mentioned that the fingerprint scanner on the OnePlus 3 is flanked by user-definable navigation keys. For example, an individual used to the stock Android button layout, like myself, can set the left capacitive key as a back button and use the right button to access the recent app screen. On the other hand, someone more accustomed to Samsung's button layout may prefer to set those two buttons in the exact opposite configuration. Like many other Android skins on the market, Oxygen OS brings support for a handful of on-screen gestures. For example, there's a double tap to wake gesture, along with other gestures to control the camera, flashlight, and music playback. In addition to the gestures, OnePlus has added a system-wide dark UI mode into Oxygen OS, which provides deep blacks on the phone's AMOLED display. Lastly, Oxygen OS gives the user the opportunity to modify colors of the OnePlus 3's notification LED on a per-app basis. On the back of the Nexus 6P, there's a 12.3 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f2.0, laser autofocus, and a dual LED flash. However, the rear sensor on the Nexus 6P is not optically stabilized. Switching over to the 6P's front-facing camera, the phone's secondary shooter features an 8 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f2.4, while it can shoot video in up to 1080p resolution. OnePlus's flagship for the first half of 2016 comes with the 16 megapixel rear camera with an aperture of f2.0, phase detection autofocus, and optical image stabilization. Below the camera, there's a single LED flash. As for the secondary camera, the OnePlus 3 selfie shooter features an 8 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f2.0. In terms of camera software, the Nexus 6P's cameras operate in tandem with the official Google Camera app. This stock camera app by Google offers the panorama, photosphere, and lens blur features that have become commonplace on Android smartphone cameras over the past few years. The Oxygen OS camera app comes packed to the gills with features to satisfy the smartphone photography enthusiast. A settings button on one side of the shutter button reveals a menu giving the user control over aspect ratio, a timer, and a grid for using the rule of thirds. On the opposite side of the screen, there's a menu button presenting a long list of shooting modes such as time-lapse, slow motion, panorama, and a manual shooting mode. As you might expect, the manual mode allows you to change white balance, ISO, exposure, and shutter speed, but not much beyond those settings. Here are some pictures taken on both phones. In terms of overall performance, both the Nexus 6P and the OnePlus 3 handled everyday tasks and constantly switching between apps without a problem. As both of these phones are constructed of metal, they both get quite warm after extended periods of gameplay. Overall, I like the premium feeling metal unibody design of both of these phones. While other YouTubers have raised questions regarding the structural integrity of the Nexus 6P, I prefer the flat side rails and chamfered edges of the 6P as Google's last Nexus flagship is easier to grip while taking pictures and recording video. While I like the overall feel and solidity of the OnePlus 3, the overly thin curved edges make the device difficult to grip for picture taking. I feel OnePlus should have made the device a little thicker using the added thickness to eliminate the phone's camera bump and to include a bigger battery. The Nexus 6P is a great device for watching online video or listening to music without headphones, and the 6P's front firing stereo speakers offer rich sound with plenty of volume. On the other hand, volume produced by the lone bottom firing speaker on the OnePlus 3 is adequate for a fairly quiet environment. So, with the OnePlus 3, I'd recommend using a pair of headphones for media consumption. As for cameras, I think the Nexus 6P's Sony Exmor IMX377 is an excellent camera, but I really have no complaints about the OnePlus 3's camera either. If you're looking for a phone running stock Android and is among the first in line for software updates, Huawei's Google Nexus 6P is certainly the better option in this comparison. Otherwise, if you like the stock Android look and feel with useful light customizations to the operating system, you should consider the OnePlus 3 or the OnePlus 3T. One area where the OnePlus 3 clearly has an advantage over the Nexus 6P is charging. OnePlus's claims that its mid-2016 phone could charge from 0-60% to in 30 minutes with the included dash charger are quite accurate. I think the Nexus 6P and the OnePlus 3 are both outstanding devices if you're looking for a top-notch smartphone without having to hand over the extra cash for a Google Pixel or the new OnePlus 3T. 
Anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.